Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Trizity Traveling. I'm your host, John, and today we are flying from Phoenix back home to Boise. Uneventful flight on Southwest for the most part. A couple hiccups before the flight actually started, and I will get into those in the video itself. Pretty excited today on a completely different note. It looks like uh, Starship Serial number nine is about to go. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, it is just at Trizity for both. But if you follow me there, you know that I was in Boca Chica, Texas to see Starship Serial number nine launch a couple weeks ago. It still hasn't happened. Anyway, it's really close, so I'm pretty excited about that. So hopefully that happens today. But today we are talking about trip report with Southwest Airlines and the what I will call yucky terminals or yucky concourse C in Phoenix compared to the lovely concourse D that Southwest operates. If you watched last week's trip report, I did the walk through the airport after I arrived just in case we didn't depart from the D gates, which it turns out we didn't. We departed from the C gates. Completely different experience in the C gates compared to the D, and I will show you that as we move forward. But before we get to the video, please take a second to click the subscribe button, hit that reminder bell, and if you like what I've done today, please give it a like at any time. I really appreciate it. That's a mouthful. Anyway, as I tend to do in these, I get a little rambly, but let's move on to the trip report. During the age of COVID, many things are impacted, as we all know. It turns out the rental car center of Phoenix is one of those. On my trip reports, I normally don't do the car return, but for many, this particular experience could impact your trip. If you don't know, the rental car center is remote from the Phoenix airport terminals, and passengers returning a car take a free shuttle back to the airport. They're working on a light rail extension to the airport, but it was not completed at the time of this visit. The actual car return process isn't different. Seating on the shuttle bus back to the airport is limited, resulting in long queues outside at the airport. The advice is get there early, and I mean much earlier. We waited at least 45 minutes in line to grab our ride to the airport. I noticed many passengers ending up calling an Uber or Lyft because of the length of the line. Turns out it wasn't an issue for us as we received our first flight delay notice while we were on the way to the rental car center itself. A couple of other notes. Prior to check-in, we were notified that seats were no longer blocked on Southwest and the plane was likely to be full. Rebooking was available if we wished. In order to check-in, we also had to acknowledge a health attestation. The actual Southwest check-in and bag drop is fast and efficient, and we were on our way into Terminal 4. Terminal 4 is officially named the Barry M. Goldwater Terminal 4. It is the airport's largest and busiest terminal, and it functions as a hub for American and Southwest. Consisting of 84 gates, it operates seven concourses currently. Southwest Airlines operates from C and D concourses. As I mentioned, we arrived in Phoenix Terminal 4 D Concourse, which is open and feels recently renovated. Concourse C is cramped and full on this Sunday. It looks like everyone is headed somewhere today, probably home after the New Year's holiday. Southwest is boarding in groups of 10, so my A41 puts us in the fifth group after the pre-boards and the 40 people in front of me. Okay, look for A40, A40 for boys. Overall, we ended up with a 30 minute delay, no reason given. Okay, let's continue to our group 41 through 50 for boys. If you're not aware, Southwest features open seating, no seating assignment. Typical Southwest seating on board, not bad, but the Boeing 737 has a little less pitch than the 800 variant.
Nice takeoff past downtown Phoenix. Let's check out the bring your own device entertainment options. Southwest provides free texting using iMessage or WhatsApp, free movies, free live TV, and internet access for eight bucks. Today I decided to purchase the internet so I could use Flight Radar 24, hoping to catch some passing aircraft. It's a good selection of movies, although not many new releases due to COVID shutdowns in Hollywood. Live TV was my viewing of choice. It is Sunday after all, and there's football on. Southwest provides a simple moving map with flight details, but with my internet purchase, I'll be using Flight Radar 24 instead. I will check the internet speed. Looks good for email and browsing, but not much else. Worked well with Flight Radar 24, by the way. And when you're flying north or south into Phoenix, you have a great opportunity to fly over the Grand Canyon. Just a stunning landscape, in my opinion. Snack time, I was able to get two waters and a gluten-filled snack mix. No snack mix for me, but thanks to the flight attendant for the double water. Also big thanks to Flight Radar 24, catching this American 737 passing below us. Nice catch for this av geek. Nothing spectacular deserving a thumbs up in my opinion today, just a nice safe flight. I do have one big thumbs down today, however. That thumbs down goes to the rental car center. Seems like limiting the number of passengers on a shuttle bus to create social distance is the norm these days. However, it seemed they were running very few buses, so they created long lines with no social distance. This seems like a pretty bad fail these days. I guess in the long run, probably doesn't matter as we're all gonna end up packed up on an airplane anyway. If you have any questions or comments, remember to post them below. Likes are especially appreciated, by the way. As always, happy travels and go Starship.